Hi, I'm Alex Kern, and I'm the actor and playwright of The Solo Show. Thank you so much for coming. And please take a look at the following video to learn more. I was very young and was encouraged to put on skits as a child, which was when that was very much an accepted word. Now, when my parents say, how are the skits going? I don't take it as well, but I was always performing as a child. Um, and then did a bunch of, you know, theater in high school and then college and then moved to New York after college and the rest is history. I just felt this urge to be on stage and I have a lot of feeling and to express it and share it and also just loved going to the theater um, and felt, I don't, I don't know, I feel like when I'm doing theater, I feel alive. When I'm watching theater, I'm reminded that I'm human. I think I fell in love with acting when I was very young and I developed, when I started, I'll never forget, my sister was studying Romeo and Juliet in eighth grade. And it's also when I was in sixth grade and the Baz Luhrmann production came out of Romeo and Juliet, which I was completely obsessed with because hello, Leonardo DiCaprio, but among other things. And I remember I would steal my sister's um, Romeo and Juliet and just memorize the monologues. I was completely obsessed with Shakespeare. And so I think that was the moment where I was like, what is this? Who is this person? What is this other world beyond me just performing in my house? Um, and then I did a production of Much Ado About Nothing my senior year and I got to play Beatrice and it was just, so I guess it was high school that I fell in love with theater. When did I fall in love with writing? I was a closet writer for many years. Um, and loved to write stories. And I remember in seventh grade, I was on this writing team called, oh gosh, what is it called? Power of the Pen. And you would do these writing competitions, but I wasn't great at timed writing. So I wasn't, I wasn't very good. But um, I was always, I was always writing little plays or what I thought were plays at home to myself in my journals. And then I lived in New York for many years and I was frustrated by the audition process and thought, I think I need to take control of the process a little bit more. And so I got into comedy and that's when I started writing and sharing my writing work. So I started doing stand up and storytelling and sketch and I made a web series. And then ever since then, it's kind of been both. It hasn't been one or the other for me. I think the theater experience is unique for actors and for the audience because no performance can be replicated. So both for the performer and the people observing the piece, you're never gonna experience it like that again. And I don't know, I mean, I'm, I guess that also occurs in music, but to me, there's something that's so special about that, that you, you, like, you can't recreate it or replicate it exactly. As a playwright, how do I feel when I see my words performed on stage? So actually this is, a lot of the writing that I've done has been video, has been writing that's been for sketches or videos. So I've never seen my words performed out of someone else's mouth. Um, so I can only answer the video element of it. But the first time I experienced it, it was for a web series that I made in New York called Single Dumb that was about inspired by my dating life, which was pretty grim in New York. And I remember seeing an actor friend of mine saying the words that I had written and I was behind the camera and I was just jumping up and down. And it was just so exciting to, to see it, to see my words that I wrote in my tiny little apartment come to life and be interpreted in a completely different way. The ideas for my show, thank you so much for coming, came from many places <laughs> like how how deep do I need to go here for this question um I really wanted to do a solo show and had been wanting to do it for many many years and before everything shut down during COVID I started going to a bunch of solo shows and I went to a bunch of solo shows at the Lyric Hyperion which is a small theater on the east side of Los Angeles and uh, just to like see what inspired me, see what was going on, see what excited me. And I saw this one show called Nate by Natalie Palamides. 
And I was completely blown away. Had never seen anything like it in my life. Saw it three times. Talked to everyone. Like, what? What was that? And friends were like, oh, that's clown. Clown in character. And I thought to myself, okay, that's what I want to do. So when the world opened back up, I didn't want to return to the stand-up world. I had done a bunch of stand-up and sketch and storytelling. I was like, what is this clown thing? And so I started taking a bunch of workshops, which then led me to meet my director. And then I started developing pieces with her and then kept working on it, kept working on it. And then it became, you know, an hour. And um, the inspiration came from a character two pieces, I guess, a character that I had, that I had found when I did the groundlings. Um, I did, this was, I guess, an advanced groundlings. I found this character named Cynthia and she was this undersexed um, florist who was not good at her job, but was just so desperate for love and attention. And I just like, I I thought she was really fun to play. And and, that, and Natasha was like, well, what characters are you drawn to if you want to do a character clown show? And I was like, sad, desperate woman. So this was a woman that I was like, oh, she's going to be the central person in here. And then I thought that it would bring even more characters in it, like other characters that I've done. And it does bring, I do incorporate different voices that I do, but it's really a show about this one character. And then I grew up in an environment that was very much all about entertaining. Like that's how my parents showed their love to their friends and their family was hosting them and cooking for them. And so that was very much to me, a second, a second language in my life. Like, what can I get you? Welcome to my home. And then I worked in the service industry for many years. And so I, I determined that that would be like a really interesting vessel to have Cynthia become this party host and then she's hosting this party and everyone in the audience are her guests. And to me, it was this idea of this woman who has been catering to all these people for so many years, making other people feel welcome and loved and um, seen. And then the idea of, well, when the party ends, what happens to this woman and the performance that she's been putting on this whole time. So it's kind of very much like a distillation of, it's definitely a distillation of loneliness. Um, and this idea of, of a woman who is performing all the time for all these other people, it's this, this, this dance, this performance of hosting and what happens when the party ends and and what happens when people start canceling, which is what happens during the show. And we, we slowly see her devolve. And um, to me, because there's a clown element to it, it's kind of like pulling out the absurdity of it. Um, and very much resonant right now because it's so much about connection and how do we connect now in this pandemic, almost post pandemic. I don't even know how we're supposed to call it world of, Connecting, how, how how do we do it now? What is our um, comfortability around it and how much that's changed? And also just this element of technology, um, how much is connection tethered to that? Thank you so much for coming is about a woman, Cynthia, and she is the ultimate party host. And she's inviting everyone into her home for the first time in years to throw an amazing party. And there's dancing and there's hats and there's, the humor um and then the phone starts ringing and people start canceling and we see her respond to the canceling and eventually devolve as the canceling continues to happen and we kind of see who this woman is underneath all these layers these performative layers of party host thank you so much for coming is a clown show and there are many different ways to uh, describe clown, but I guess my understanding, or at least my experience of it within this show is very much the audience is part of the show. So it's, it's immersive. It's an immer immersive experience. So as the performer, I'm breaking the fourth wall and clown to me is what is the performer experiencing and then sharing that with the audience? The performer in clown cannot, or the human, I guess, in clown cannot hide. 
Um, and to me, it's very much a celebration of sitting in like failure and sharing it publicly. And so regardless of, of how the performer is feeling, sharing that with the audience and then responding off of how they are responding to you. In this play, there is a phone call element, a phone ring that comes in several times. And as I was developing this, I realized how haunting a phone call can be and how it has a different meaning for everyone on the receiving end of it. Um, and it, we, we see that in, in, in the performance, the character kind of playing with this idea of, should I answer it? Should I not answer it? Who's on the other end of the call? And hopefully that creates a, a sense of tension in the audience because everyone has their own, um, relationship with the phone call everyone has someone that they don't want to get the phone call from everyone has a phone call that they don't want to receive um and and i i've it's been some, as i've gotten older it's just interesting to me how that the relationship of that phone ring of that phone call has changed so much what do i want the audience to get out of my play um i hope that they feel like they see themselves and what they're watching, or they see someone that they care about and what they're watching. I hope this is this resonates with with the audience, and I and I hope they laugh. And I, hey, I hope they cry too. I want both. <laughs> what am I looking for when I'm performing live? I want to stay present. I want to stay connected to myself and therefore available to the audience. I just want to stay in the process and and see what. I'm able to discover up there for the first time. Like I'm excited for the surprises that come and I want to be so connected that I'm available to the surprises. I don't want to be looking for the next moment. And I think that's what clown really, really encourages is like, let's sit in this moment. Let's take our time. Let's be silent. Let's play with sound. Let's play with silence and let's see what, how we can surprise ourselves and the people who are, who are watching the performance. Why must people go to my show? I think because it is a piece that explores what it means to be a woman and what it means to be, to feel like you want to be seen, but you don't really want to be seen and how to how to share of yourself in a world that told us for so many years that we need to hide inside. I think it's just like very resonant right now because it's so much about connection and loneliness and technology and the expectations around how we're, how we're supposed to show up in the world. I think it's important for anyone in order to support me as an artist, please come to my show. Hello, I'm Alex Kern. I'm the actor and playwright of the solo show. Thank you so much for coming. Please come to my show. Um, and it's about this woman named Cynthia and she's hosting this amazing party and she just wants you to come, okay? She's gonna have, she's, she's just the ultimate host, okay? You gotta come, don't forget to come, okay, please. She's gonna get so upset if you don't come. So yeah, please come to my show.